Now we're going to listen to lung sounds, what's known as auscultation. So we're going to listen for vesicular, crackles, wheezes, strider, really anything going on inside the lungs here. And we're going to show you a quick assessment of really how to do it. But always remember, we're going between the ribs in the intercostal space, basically meaning in between the ribs here. So normal breath sounds, you are hearing that air open and close in the alveoli. So we want that good air exchange. So let me show you how we're going to be doing the assessment. Always remember, keep the basics correct. We want the little ear thingies here to be pointed this way to go right into the ear. Trust me, you'll see it a lot in movies where they go the opposite way and it doesn't really work. Okay, so put it into the ear right here. And Allison, how are we doing this assessment? So you're gonna use the diaphragm of your stethoscope. An easy way to remember that is it's the lung auscultation. So with your lungs, use your diaphragm to breathe. Oh. So you're using the large side, the diaphragm of the stethoscope. And you're gonna start up at the apices. So you're start up high on the back. And again, you're gonna do that side to side zigzag pattern, having the patient breathe in and out every time you move your stethoscope. And so we want to have that in and out with every movement. So you hear both the inspiration and the expiration. Okay. Because some sounds only happen on inhale and some sounds only happen on exhale. And so you, lots of times we'll see, we move a little bit fast in this, so we wanna take our time and not hyperventilate our patient. And you guys know how this, uh, this looks. You've been to the doctor's office where they're like, put a really cold stethoscope on you, take a deep breath and relax. Okay, deep breath and relax. And we're just trying to go down and then across, right? And this is listening to those upper, middle, and lower lobes of the lungs. Mm -hmm. And you always wanna make sure that you're putting it on bare skin so that way you don't get any extra sounds that come from that gown and that you always auscultate on the front and the back of the patient. Uh, because a lot of times you can better hear the lower lobes from the back and more hear the upper lobes from the front. So it gives you that more complete picture. So let's do the front then. Hey there, nursing student, listen up. Did you know only 20% of our videos are here on YouTube? You're missing out on over 900 videos not on YouTube, plus 500 visual study guides that follow along every video, and a massive quiz bank to test your knowledge. All neatly organized in our new app. Try it for free. Visit simplenursing.com today. All right, now for the anterior lung sounds here. It's almost very similar to the back, but Allison's going to show us how to do it here. So, and again, just like the back, you're going to start at the top and you're going to place the bare stethoscope on the patient's skin and you're going to be moving in that side to side zigzag pattern, going to one side, then the other, then moving down, then going over. And again, you want to hear that inhale, exhale with every placement of the stethoscope. So that way you don't miss something. And what we're expecting to hear is that soft, clear vesicular lung sounds heard throughout those lobes of the lungs. And that again, like you said before, to, um, shows us that the patient's getting good gas exchange. Now, when you assess the side, you want that arm to be lifted up. Yes. There we go. And the side is a great location on that mid axillary point and on the axle of the patient, because it's also where you can hear a few lobes at once. So great if for some reason you can't get to the patient's back, like if you're worried they have a cervical spine injury, so you don't wanna rotate them side to side just yet. And so you can use that in the meantime. All right, now let's talk about bronchial, bronchovesicular, and even vesicular. So Allison, how do we assess these? Very good. So for the bronchial sounds, so we talked about the vesicular over those lobes of the lungs and over those lung fields. Mm -hmm. That's going to be softer, kind of musical sometimes they say. But so if we were listening with our stethoscope and listening over the client's trachea, it's going to sound very loud, kind of like air going through a big tube, okay. because your trachea is a big tube. Yeah, it's the air pipe, windpipe. Yeah. So we call those bronchial, and those are going to be loud. Okay, bronchial is booming and loud, okay. Yes, and then if we were listening over the sternum or even nearby the sternum, that is going to be called bronchovesicular, Okay. which makes sense. If this is bronchial and this is vesicular, in the middle is bronchovesicular. Combine the two, bronchovesicular. So if this is loud and this is soft, what do you think bronchovesicular is? Oh, loud and soft. Together. Very good. Medium. Medium. Okay. <laughs> okay. What about vesicular? Just soft? Just soft. Okay. And so you're going to hear that basically air moving in and out of the alveoli. Oh, and where do we usually hear those at? 
So that would be over those lobes that you just demonstrated. Yeah, those lung or the lobes, the lung fields, and just listening over those alveoli. Fantastic. Now for a few practice questions. While auscultating a client's trachea, the nurse hears a high, harsh sound with short inspiration and long expiration. How should the nurse document this finding? Bronchial breath sounds. And question number two, the nurse is preparing to auscultate the lung sounds of a client. Which sound will the nurse expect to hear over most of the client's lungs? Vesicular. And the last question here, what are normal breath sounds? Vesicular sounds, which are soft, low pitched and breezy, heard over most of the peripheral lung fields. That was actually from Kaplan. All right, now let's cover abnormal lung sounds. We have a really great segment with all the lung sounds that you need to know. So let's cut to that right now. 